Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited. So I don't know what you guys have been doing, but for nearly four years now, I've been making my own little web show on YouTube called Sylvia's Super Awesome Maker Show, where I teach kids and adults all about how to make something cool, or ways to experiment with things in awesome ways, from paper rockets to electronics to weird and sticky slime. We've made over 20 shows so far, and we've gotten a few people watching. I think we may have over 1.8 million. I've heard for a 12-year-old, that's not too bad, right? <laughs> Back when I was five, I got inspired to get hands-on and start making things after going to this place called Maker Fair. If you haven't heard about it, Maker Fair is this huge event where thousands of people come to see and show off amazing things they've made. You can sit and learn to create something, or even ride crazy contraptions welded out of old bikes or car parts. All while being able to talk to the real makers and inventors behind it all, something you almost never get a chance to do in real life. Before going to my third Maker Fair when I was eight, me and my dad wanted to do something fun, but we weren't very good at making any real things, so we decided to make a show. I ran around and did crazy stuff, I made a lab coat, and I built a kit and experimented with it for everyone to see. When we finished, I drew up my very own business card that I handed out days later at Maker Faire. I got noticed by a bunch of really cool people, such as Adam Savage from Mythbusters. And um, I started doing shows for Mag Make Magazine Online. And less than a year later, I was on co the cover of Make Magazine itself. It was crazy. People wanted me to go with them to talk, teach, or just be there and start making stuff with them. It was crazy. So my latest educational project started way back in January. Um, I really wanted to do something for this event called RoboGames, an international robotics competition that takes place in April. I hadn't really built anything kind of big before, or had any luck at making anything big, or uh, anything, I, I really, um, or a real robot that did anything. I wanted to do a big combat robot that really was complicated, and I thought maybe I should start smaller. Um, I knew they had an ArtBot competition category, and knew they would have everything I would need to make my robot. So I did some doodles and came up with the PaintBot 1.0. It started in January. I wanted to do something in April, which was Rover Games. In February, um, I, my parents sent me off to spend a vacation week off at school, off school at Evil Mad Scientist Labs, an awesome homegrown science and electronics kit manufacturer. And they, they would have everything I would need to make my robot. And I met the owners, Lenore and Wendell, back at Maker Fair. They knew I would have everything I would make, need to make my robot, and they thought it would be really cool if I tried to come and make something. By the end of the week, I had my first working prototype. I learned so much about building, engineering, and programming by the end that I felt like I accomplished a lot. We decided to call it the watercolor bot. I took it home, and from February to April, we iterated the design, failed a lot, made a lot of new parts, and and we felt so much, sometimes I thought the problems were just impossible to get by. But by staying with it, I, we tried almost everything and eventually got something that was ready for the competition. And then, about two weeks before RoboGames, we got this crazy call from the White House. They wanted me to go to their science fair and they asked if I had a project I could bring. Of course, their science fair happened to be on the exact same day as my own sixth grade science fair. So I could either rig my study on the flammability of fabrics or I could bring in the watercolor bot. In under a week, I made two science fair project boards, finalized the bot, and with help from another friend from Maker Faire, made a demo where you could draw exactly what you wanted by drawing on an iPad. At RoboGames, I happened to win second place in the art bot competition. And the next day, flew to Washington, DC, and made some headlines. This guy in particular seemed to like it. Not sure what all the fuss is about. Everyone we showed it to really wanted one, so we thought, why not? I thought if we could get the bots out, they'd become a resource for kids and adults who wanted to, who, resource for kids and adults who wanted to make something, program or uh, get into art. We launched a Kickstarter campaign uh, on July 16th, and by August 16th, we raised nearly $90,000. And right now, chips are being shipped, uh, bots are being shipped out to make makers and educators around the world, already experimenting with something that was just. 11-year-old uh, girl's doodle on scratch paper less than a full year ago. <laughs> Anyways, here it is. It works... Here, here, let's start it. Anyways, it works a bit like an Etch-a-Sketch, using these rods and pulleys to help the carriage move on an X and Y axis, with these uh, stepper motors moving these super strong strings to position the paintbrush exactly. 
You can even take out the paintbrush and replace it with a pen or pencil and draw far more detailed things, like text or numbers, or even have it do your homework for you. <laughs> so on my adventures around the world, almost all the kids I met had a dream. Some crazy idea about a laundry suit that dresses you as you slide down it, or maybe a flying car that turns into a robot. Deep within, these kids really want to try to get their goal, but actually reaching their goal is really hard. You try and do this, and it's really hard for you, but you enter through the door of inspiration, happy and excited where you want to be, but suddenly you hit this crazy maze of hard work. You, you keep hitting dead ends and wrong turns that lead you back where you started. You're not really sure where to go, and instructions from others don't really make sense sometimes. You just want to give up and take the easy path backwards to the lounge filled with comfy couches and brain-dissolving entertainment. I know it doesn't sound that bad, but it stops you, and getting stuck in the lounge can get you really further away from your dreams. All you need to do is focus, fail a lot, and keep coming back to your goal. You really can get to your goal when you try, with a little help. So, in closing, um, you really can take your ideas, whatever they may be inspired by, and turn them into real physical things that we can share and inspire with. All you need to do is not to be too afraid of failing, asking for help, and giving back when you can. You real and listen, I want all your girls out there to know that I'm no genius. I don't have perfect grades, and I'm just the same as you guys. I just want to get more people into making. So can you guys do something for me? Whether you're five or 105, get out there and make something. Yeah.